what is on tap today at Coos's Corner. We're talking ESPN, we're talking media deals for conferences, and where will the Big 12 land when the dust settles. So pull up a chair, sit back, relax, let me serve you up another shot. Top shelf college football knowledge. Let's go. What is up, college sports fans, fellow members of Mountaineer Nation? This is Coos, and welcome into another edition of Coos's Corner. So pull up that chair, and be sure to hit the red subscribe button if you like this kind of content. Be sure to give me the thumbs up if you like this video. Please share it out with your college sports-loving friends. And last but not least, please leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about this topic, which is ESPN, their TV deals with the conferences, and where big, the Big 12 will land at the end of the day. Before I get into it, though, I want to let you know the reason I'm coming to you from a car. I'm sitting in Charlotte, North Carolina, waiting for my daughter and two of her friends to come out of a Machine Gun Kelly concert. I had no desire to go into that show, so I let my daughter come with a couple of her friends, and I brought them here, and I'm letting them enjoy the show while I'm bringing this to you guys, and I had a few minutes to spare. So with that being said, let's get into it. I read an article in The Athletic today where ESPN chairman Jimmy Pitaro was interviewed by on a podcast called the sports media podcast uh, by mr richard and i hope i don't butcher this name but richard deach and mr deach asked mr pataro several questions about several different sports but the one i want to focus on here is the one about espn and where they are with the various conferences power five conferences specifically in their contract negotiations now when it comes to the big 10 the only thing mr pataro could say was that they were in discussions they are interested in having the Big Ten as part of their uh, part of their coverage, uh, but where that's going to land, he doesn't know. We all have heard through reports that it looks like Fox is probably going to be the primary carrier for it for the Big Ten network or for the Big Ten uh, conference, They're going to carry most of their media rights or at least have the first tier rights to them. But ESPN does want to have a piece to be a piece of that uh, conversation or a piece of that puzzle. Next, he asked about the SEC. Now, obviously, this one has a lot more detail. We all know that ESPN is going to be the Tier 1 rights holder for the SEC, and that includes the following. The first pick in football every week. Right now, that belongs to CBS in that 3.30 Eastern Time window. Well, ESPN will now have that 3.30 window along with other windows as well. ESPN will have an SEC game on one of their networks, whether it be ABC, ESPN, ESPN2, in all three time windows every Saturday. So they will have a noon game, a 3.30 game, and a primetime game every single Saturday on one of their networks. And they get to choose what games those are. That also includes one out-of-conference game per SEC team every season. In 2024, the first year of the agreement, they will have 14 non-conference games played on their networks with SEC teams. Obviously in 2025, that will go up to 16 because that's when Texas and Oklahoma are expected to join. Now, there are some outlets out there running with that saying, hey, this confirms that Texas and Oklahoma aren't joining until 2025. Well, it might, but it could also mean that Mr. Pataro just can't say anything because he doesn't want to interfere with the negotiations that might take place between Oklahoma, Texas, and the Big 12. He can't say anything about that, even if he does know. So, you know, read into it what you will. We still don't really know the firm answer. On that, uh, he, they also asked him, "Well, with this deal with the SEC, will there be any room for any more inventory, meaning any other games from with other conferences?" And he said, "Yes, there will be. Uh, we're not going to be SEC exclusive. Uh, there will be less inventory, but where he says they're going to be thoughtful about it, and they will pursue agreements with other conferences, specifically the Big Ten and the Pac-12." Now, that being said, he did not mention the ACC or the Big Twelve. But we all know they already have a deal with the ACC through 2036. So there's no reason to mention the ACC. They're already locked in. We all know the Big 12 is locked in for now, but only through 2025. Their deal expires only two years, or, or one year rather, after the SECs. But yet he didn't mention them. So either he didn't mention them because it's too early, or because ESPN just isn't interested in the Big 12. Now, unfortunately, as bad as I hate to say it, I think it's the latter. Because, folks, we're only three years from this deal expiring. They have to start negotiating these deals pretty soon. 
I would say that it's going to be one of the first responsibilities of this new new commissioner that's hired whenever he's he or she is selected. It's going to be their primary job. So, to me, his omission of the Big 12 is telling. Now, maybe I'm reading too much into it. You tell me in the comments if I am. But to me, it means they're not really that interested in the Big 12. And we already know that's one of the reasons Texas and Oklahoma left the league. Fox and ESPN both refused to renegotiate the TV deal early. So Texas and Oklahoma bolted for a conference where they could get a good deal. Because they, I guess they saw the writing on the wall that maybe a deal, a good deal wasn't forthcoming. I don't know. Uh, now, here's what I think could happen. I hope this does, this would be kind of a worst-case scenario, in my opinion, is that the Big 12 gets the scraps. ESPN will do the deal with SEC. They will get, obviously, obviously they already have the ACC, and, and I think they still have a deal with the AAC as well. Uh, they'll do something with the Big 10 and or the Pac-12, and then Big 12 will get the crumbs. So they basically get whatever time, crappy time slots are left over, or there's no room for them at all. That's probably the worst case scenario. Uh, or they get stuck strictly on ESPN Plus, which I do not want that to happen. But here's what I think will likely happen. I think the Big 12 will likely, likely get left completely out of the ESPN conversation and will likely get a deal with one of the other networks. Now, we all with, with CBS losing the SEC, that opens the door for the Big 12 to potentially take that Tier 1 media rights deal with them. So they could get the CBS deal, and they could get uh, you know Tier 2 deals with other networks like Fox. Uh, or, or NBC even potentially or they could you know get a second tier deal with one of the streaming services like Amazon or Apple and they and they might still get a few things on ESPN too who knows uh, it's all you know it's obviously it's all yet to be determined but it's uh, you know definitely something to think about uh, is there is there something to take out of this uh, omission of the big 12 in this conversation on this podcast or like I said am I reading too much into it and he just didn't mention the big 12 because it's too early but to me, folks, three years is not too early. They've got to, got to start thinking about the deals with these other leagues. And with the, the Pac-12's deal and, and the Big Ten's deal already uh, expiring and coming up for negotiations prior to the Big 12, I'm afraid it won't leave room for the Big 12 uh, on ESPN's platform. That might not be a bad thing, though. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of ESPN anyway for, for various reasons. Uh, I, I would It wouldn't hurt my feelings at all if they do end up on a different network, to be honest with you. Uh, I could just drop if, if they end up not even on ESPN Plus. I could just drop my ESPN Plus subscription, save my, save myself a few bucks a month, and watch their games on something else like CBS. Okay, wouldn't hurt my feelings a bit. Let me know in the comment section. What do you think this means? Do you think it means anything? Um, and what would you like to see happen? If you're a big fan of a Big 12 team, uh, also folks, don't forget my new merch I've got. Unfortunately, the version with black lettering is not available due to some copyright issues, but I do have the version with white lettering. It's up on the screen now. I've got t-shirts, tank tops, hoodies, ball caps, uh, bandanas, uh, a lot of different items to choose from, so go check it out. I've also got the items with my my channel logo on it if you want that instead. I have a lot of different options. I can, I've got about any product you could ask for in that uh, with that design. Mouse pads, uh, iPhone cases, a lot of different things that aren't available in the other one. Uh, if you don't want to buy merch but you want to support me financially, you can join my channel. Hitting the button right below, take advantage of the perks there, uh, which includes, if you're a Mountaineer Maniac level member, it includes a discount on the merch, by the way, on the new merch. Uh, and also, last but not least, if you want to support me 100% free, there's four ways you can do it, and it all only takes a second. You can like my video, share this out with your friends, comment, leave a comment below, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't. All of that helps me out. It helps that YouTube algorithm. Gets my videos pushed out into the into the world more. Helps my video get seen more and helps me grow. I really appreciate you getting me to 2,500 subs. That's a big accomplishment for a good old uh, West Virginia hillbilly like myself. So I appreciate you guys always tuning into these videos and supporting me. And until next time, Q Country Roads.